Hello, good morning. It feels like a year instead of a semester. Everyone is tired already. Feels impossible to get to May and the end of the semester and the exams, but we have to try. Today, as you see, the planned topic is Wikipedia and we'll get to it, but my priority is to continue the work we did on Monday by developing two discussions, actually, that will be in-class activities. Normally, I would have had the class form small groups and conduct an actual discussion and exchange ideas, but given the circumstances, I think it's safer to do it as an individual in-class activity. We'll have two of them, one focusing on the final project because, as I said, it's time you start seriously thinking about the final project. The other in-class individual activity will focus on chapters 7 and 8 of the second textbook, The Social History of the Media, which I will not introduce myself because they're about topics that you are mostly familiar with, but I want to have an opportunity for you to express ideas to bounce those ideas off of me and get also some feedback. The third part of this class, if there is enough time, is to show you the first screenshots from this page that I linked under 1D that allows us to look at the technical details of Wikipedia. Then in the weeks to follow, we will also talk about the history of Wikipedia, the culture of Wikipedia, where Wikipedia is going, etc. Wikipedia being the most famous, the most popular, the most successful by far wiki, codified with a language called MediaShare, which is in fact very similar to DocuWiki. We opted for DocuWiki because it was easier for you to practice uh, on that uh, app than it is uh, doing the same with media shared. Just a quick announcement. The same thing that happened last Wednesday is happening today for the second and last time. That is to say, between 12.30 p.m. and 2 p.m. I'm having the virtual open house for the program in Globalization Studies and International Relations. Therefore, if you need to talk to me, come right after class. As soon as I'm done with the class, I gather my stuff and I go to my office in the library in room N, as in North, 3004. Come between a quarter to noon, right? By, by 11.45, usually I'm in the office. And until 12.30, after 12.30, you'll find me in the office, but I'll be talking on Zoom to uh, people interested in the program coming to know more about the program, coming to ask questions. This is the second and, and last, actually there is another one this evening, but the second event affecting this class and then I'll resume my regular office hours. Otherwise, if you have an urgent need to talk to me, I can be available this afternoon on Zoom. Just let me know via email. I'll respond after 2 p.m. Or uh, Tomorrow, as usual, I have Zoom office hours between 4.30 and 6 p.m. Okay. So, for these two individual in-class activities, you have two options. One is simply to take a piece of paper and write your ideas, your reflections, your observations on this piece of paper, which you then place on the table at the end of the class. And I will send you my feedback. We'll share some of the ideas in class, but otherwise I'll send you individualized feedback via email. Or you can email me. You can write, again, your ideas, observations, anywhere in any editor of your choice, and then you can copy and paste what you wrote inside an email and send that email to me at andrea.fedi 
at Stony Brook dot edu and please put SS 395 in the subject heading so that your messages are properly redirected and filed to a folder that I'll be working on in order to send you back, respond within a few days and send you back any kind of feedback that might be useful to you. As I said, there are two individual activities planned for this morning. Don't send me two, two different emails, two separate emails. Wait until the second activity is completed before you send me just one email with both. And you can put some kind of heading to separate your ideas for one activity from the ideas on the other. And we'll just do it one at a time. So for now, I will just introduce the first activity, give you a little bit of time, 10 minutes or so, engage in a discussion, and then we'll move on to the second activity. So the first activity has to do with the final project. And the focal points for your reflection are the following. Which app are you planning to use for your final project? Remember that the uh, primary choices are Notion, Evernote, DocuWiki, which are the apps that were introduced, demonstrated, and discussed in class. As I suggested earlier, you might be familiar with another app, or you might be curious uh, in uh, uh, another app within the same category of knowledge apps, right, or knowledge-based apps, in which case, you can suggest a different app and I will send you in my feedback, my approval or some cautionary warnings about the use of another app. And again, it should be something that you're already familiar with. Of course, the choice of an app should be accompanied, should not just be a one-liner, right? But explain why, briefly. What drive you what drove you to the choice of a particular app. The second focal point for this activity is what are the goals of your project? And notice that I put goals first and in here clearly you will need to talk about the contents of your project but the choice of a content is secondary. You're not going to be judged based on what you wrote in the project, right? Of course, it has to be meaningful content, right? It cannot be uh, completely invented or artificial. But what are you going to do with those content? In terms of design, and you might not have all of your ideas laid out. I know that this is a preliminary activity, the purpose of which is to force you to start thinking about the project. And don't forget that whatever you write during this activity is not binding. It doesn't mean that you cannot change app or change the design or change the content. But let's start processing this, the fact that we have an assignment in front of us that will require some effort throughout the next weeks, not for the last three hours before the deadline. So you have to think about the design especially and the functionality, the functions that will be embedded and will allow a specific treatment of the content, okay? So what are the goals? What I have in mind is the knowledge-related goals for this app. Um, by the way, do, do you want me to lift the screen? Are you able to see the notes from this angle? Because otherwise I can, we don't need this, I can shut it up and, and lift the screen. 
Just tell me, people over there, okay? And finally, most importantly, what would be the added value to this project? That is to say, how is this project, in terms of design and functionality, different from any other kind of regular website? That is to say, using the particular app that you have in mind, what are you adding to this set of content? You are presenting the content to a viewer, right? And you're presenting it based on a certain kind of structure, distribution of content. You can add emphasis with colors, with font styles, with call out boxes, with the template and layout of each page. But it must be something that is more than, I have a few pages, they have titles and subtitles, now read it and find knowledge in it. How is this project a more dynamic presentation than it would be if you were just writing a book, formatting a book and then distributing it, or creating a website? What is that this app allows you to do that makes <coughs> accessing the information, accessing the content, reorganizing the content, filtering or clustering the content more expeditious, easier to accomplish, or more surprising, more brilliant than a regular website. So these are the points. If anyone just entered the room, you can come here and I can explain separately any of these points. But these are the points that you can put on a piece of paper or start writing and eventually before, not now, because there is another activity, but eventually you send to me before the end of this class, okay? You have 10 minutes. Again, I know that these are preliminary ideas that you might have all a plan and instead of observations or reflections, you might include questions for yourself, right? Issues that you have to address. It can be problematic. It, it's not a report on a project that is ongoing. It's a series of points for reflection, or it can be a brainstorming session. Okay, so you have 10 minutes starting from now trying to fill up on these points. Why, what app are you choosing and why? What are your goals? And of course, goals are applied to content and those goals are what related also to what kind of design or template you will choose and what kind of functions you will want to embed. And the overarching issue, what is the added value? What is the, the use of certain app combined with a certain template design and a set of function is adding to the experience of a potential user, okay? So go ahead and trying to find the time. It's almost 10.45, so we'll continue until 10.55 and then before the next activity, I will ask you if you want to share some of your ideas to engage in a brief discussion and then I'll tell you what else I have in mind, this time in reference to chapters seven and eight. As I said, if you have questions, you can ask them from where you're sitting. If you think those are general questions, you can come here or you can call me and I'll walk to you if you're comfortable with, with proximity, okay? And eventually, when I receive your notes, I'll send you some ideas, such as, perfect, you're on the right track, just develop those ideas, or you should also be thinking of this, or you should possibly revise this goal, or expand this goal, etc. okay?
And as I said, uh, you, you might find it useful based on your plan to go back and review, if you wish, the demo lessons about the app. But I would say more than that, go to the various help pages, which in, uh, for, for, for especially Notion and Evernote, uh, offer a wealth of suggestions and tutorials and think of how you should deepen your knowledge of certain features in an app or instead of the help pages, you can rely often on YouTube channels and learn more that you can apply to your project. Okay, that would be the time we have for this. As I said, if your notes are not systematic, comprehensive, exhaustive, don't worry. This is just a preliminary activity to get you thinking about this. So I want to go around or hear some feedback about each of these points, okay? So we'll start from the easiest. What is your app of choice? And if you can briefly, briefly elaborate on what prompted your choice. Chase. Uh, I chose Notion. Like Notion seems a little more user friendly, but you have more access to a lot of the features with the creative on it. Yes, so absolutely. There's more, there's more we can do with it than with yeah. Evernote unless we have our own account. Yeah. Or DocuWiki, which is a little bit crazy with the coding. Yes. I, I understand and I agree completely. It feels more uh, cutting edge, even though overall uh, notion we see it's developing in uh, into a kind of corporate tool, which in the end might be useful for you if you apply in the future for a job at a company that is using notion, but it makes it less exciting for the individual user than it appeared to be when it first came out. Antonio, you want to say something? Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, okay, sorry. Sometimes <laughs> the mask and everything. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I also for my use Notion because um, I I really like its interface compared to the other two apps. It's easy to use and it's uh -huh. easier to like get straight into so creating what you want. Okay, good. To what extent you find it also elegant and, and pleasing from from an external point of view? Does that play a role in your choice? I mean, I feel like um, if you have a, a, a notion, there's like puzzles and there's like other embedded functions that you can use. Like with Dr. Wiki, you have to actually close. And like if you forget like to include the parentheses or the closing ones, you know, that is true. Absolutely. But I mean also that from a visual standpoint, there are some applications that are as powerful, more powerful. For example, I'm experimenting with Remnote, but Notion is vastly more elegant. And by elegance, I don't mean just aesthetically pleasing, but also the combination between the visual appearance and the efficiency of the work. So not clattering the visual field of the user making everything available and producing something that is easily made into an effective uh, presentation of the content. So, Jean. Yeah, so I chose Notion because uh, I can show my idea more clearly and like So it's also more flexible, right? It has this free flow, uh, this, this process that can adapt in time, and that is essential, right? These apps are not traditional apps for the creation of a database. 
but they maintain an open side. They're creative in a way that allows for changes to occur at any time during the process of creation. Anyone else? Can we hear from anyone who has not chosen Notion? If you want to share your ideas. Let's hear from one or two more people who have chosen Notion then. Yes, Hilary. Um, well, I'm going to choose Notion anyway because um, since I see, saw your lecture from the last semester, like you have literally the nicest like lecture notes and mm -hmm. the syllabus and everything. Mm -hmm. So I've been learning to use Notion. So I'm basically most familiar with Notion and it has a lot of like great tools, although you say it's more leaning towards the corporate tools instead of individual. But so far Notion has been like more beneficial for me in terms of like keeping track of my schedules and my uh, notes. So you've been making the personal use of the app as well, not just for the purpose of completing assignments. Yes. Right. Okay. So let's move to the second point. What are your goals? So mention by all means the kind of contents you want to include and base your project on, but I'm more interested in how are you going to organize the content and apply a design and apply advanced features to increase the functionality, to increase the uh, uh, outcome of your project. Who would like to expand on that based on what you have in your report? Yes. I feel like a lot of the websites that are out right now just simply like word and definition. Yes. Not necessarily how it's used, why it's used. So I want to get into more like that or mm -hmm. fundamental use. So the goals would be to learn a language, right? Or to support the learning of a language. Yes. What kind of design or what kind of functions do you think would be uh, more efficacious for that kind of goal? I don't know what design, but I know what not design. I'm okay. Doing. Yeah. So sure. Most, That's web, right. most websites you just do like tables. Like mm -hmm. Yeah. Definition. Yeah. Kind of flat, boring. Exactly. I don't Could you design something that looks like flashcards? And I just devise a system whereby you have the um, regular repetitions, right? Space repetitions that are very popular when it comes to language learning these days. On, on the internet, the idea that you review uh, lists of words to expand your vocabulary, or you re review conjugations at certain times to reinforce your memory until those things are fixed in your, in your memory. Would that be possible in some way, or could you use links to, to have some kind of glossary? Would you distribute the uh, uh, content in such a way that uh, there is one word per paragraph that can be linked to, or one word, one phrase per page, and that everything comes together. That's what I was thinking of doing something where it's sort of like a one uh, word per paragraph that links to another page or where you connect this aspect of this word. What about the kind of media that could be included? Sound, video, do you have any plans for that? I was thinking of doing sound, not necessarily video, mm -hmm. but sound. Okay. Anyone else? We have at least room for another one. So, I want to explain the current financial market. Yes. About high interest rate and something like that. So, I want to add those contents from various sources. And that clearly 
feels like an open-ended project, right? Not a project, of course, a project that will be delivered as seemingly complete for the purpose of the class, but based on its nature, it could be something that someone could be working on, adding information and growing this set of knowledge-related content in the future. So how do you see this growing based on what? Uh, what kind of tags or links would you incorporate in the design so that the filtering could happen differently during different periods of time, meaning what is relevant today might not be as relevant in the future. And for that kind of database, if we think of a possible development, you wouldn't want all the information to be flatly laid out on the same line because some information get old quickly if you're talking about financial situation, financial trends, etc. So you don't want to eliminate information that you are archived, but you want to have a kind of dynamic presentation that would allow to see the latest, to see what is relevant from a temporal standpoint in terms of the evolution of the market, right? So it's not just about the content and how the links uh, represent connections and patterns that exist there, but how the content evolves together with the needs of the user, which three months from now would not be what they are today, right? I would also keep that in mind. Maybe I have to separate those content with some pages, like for instance, to... I, I think it would be vital also to include chronology and time uh, in the tags, okay. right? Or use the creation date uh, to establish what is uh, relevant that would be a kind of crude as opposed to tags. So I would not just have semantic tags, but I would also have tags that give users the option to restrict their filtering of the information or their access to information based on time. Because what was relevant about uh, uh, financial uh, trends in the field of, of cryptocurrencies three months ago is not as relevant as what happened one week ago. So I, I need to separate content in different ways, not just semantically. Okay, I need to stop here to introduce the next activity after which you can send everything to me via email or you can deliver your page to the table. And the second activity has to do with the contents of chapters seven and eight of the social history of the media where they talk about the global communication markets, the development of the satellite systems, the introduction of personal computers and gaming consoles, devices for uh, gamers, the invention of video games, the creation of the internet and of social media, how social media affected private and public identities. And finally, at the end of chapter eight, the overlapping of different technologies and different devices, because even though we now have devices such as tablets, personal computers, laptop, that essentially could replace radios, TVs, uh, stereos, etc. We see a lot of those technologies surviving or even thriving. For example, there is a huge comeback to stereo players and uh, traditional records away from digital music offered with uh, a, a crude format and not such a high resolution by Spotify and similar streaming platforms. The goals, the topics for the next reflections are the following. To what extent do you feel that the devices and the apps or software programs you are using more often on a daily basis, regularly, are enabling you? Are 
adding value to your life. So think of the two, three apps or software programs or video games that you're using regularly. Think of the one, two, or three devices that you're using on a regular basis. What value do you feel they add to your life? In what ways are, you, are, are they enabling you to perform functions more effectively or more happily, etc.? But the other side of that reflection is condition. To what extent do you think that your regular use of those devices, apps, software programs, or games are conditioning your life and therefore limiting, restricting to what, what you could be doing, right? And forcing your practices, your daily activities into certain boundaries, parameters, right? So, what is the use of digital devices and digital programs adding to your life, and what is the other side of the coin? What is the negative impact that they have because you're essentially attached to those devices, or you're essentially uh, relying on those apps and, and limiting your freedom of choices. Okay, and again, I'll give you 10 minutes for the writing. Actually, I'll give you nine minutes until 11.20, and then five minutes for a sharing a brief discussion. And try to provide examples either from your personal life or the lives of the people that you see around you, your friends, your relatives, etc. Try to be specific. In terms of conditioning versus enabling, you can think of about the following. What are the goals that you set for yourself and you accomplish with those devices or apps what are the goals that the apps or the devices have? And are those goals, your individual goals, the goals of the company that designed and is selling the app or the device perfectly aligned? Or is the device, the app, taking you to a path that you would not necessarily go along? Or offer you more, but requiring more from you. This is especially true of video games, but it's applicable also to some of the social media, right? Video games don't offer you the experience you might want to have in the game itself. They might force you to go through different levels just be grinding to produce credits to get powerful instruments to get better cars in racing video game etc okay so first if you completed these two in-class activities on your computer this would be a good time as any to copy everything paste everything into your email and send it to andrea.fedi at stonybrook.edu. Of course, use your Stonybrook Gmail account to do so. Make sure that the address is typed correctly. And as I said, I will send you individual responses. Just give me a week or so. I will also be working on your uh, DocuWiki assignments and I'll send you back my feedback what I think of your ideas for the project, and also uh, how interesting I found your observations. Okay, so we're so, so sending both activities. Yes, together in one email. Okay. <clears throat> Unless you place them, if, if you by any chance place everything, let's say, in a Notion page, 
then you can share that page with me so that I can read from there and therefore send me a link. It, it doesn't matter. So we have five minutes to share some of these ideas or examples quickly. A couple of people who want to say something about how you feel enabled by digital devices or apps and how you feel conditioned by them. Limited in what way? Yes. Well, um, most important digital device is my smartphone, obviously, because it's a very powerful device and mm -hmm. it has a palm of your hands. And from communication to media capture or player and everything, like LMs and everything, mm -hmm. it's basically, I, I, I use everything in my phone, note taking. Uh, but the conditioning is, I can't go anywhere without my phone. Like, I would feel like a caveman if I don't have my phone. Like, I don't know what time is it. I would not, uh, I would be lost probably because I don't know where am I. So I'd be relying too much to my phone. What is that makes your phone so essential for you? Is the device itself and the functions that are engineered into it or the fact that the phone is a portal into the global network, the internet, the World Wide Web? Yeah, it's... Or a combination of both? Yeah, it's uh, from both because like, you know, like the... Obviously, back then, phone was used to for like merely communication from phone calls and text message. But now, um, there's a lot of apps like maps and um, social media to connect more but um, most impactful is usually uh, maps because I am practically don't know where am I most of the mm -hmm. time and you wouldn't know where to go yeah I would not or or when to leave etc exactly and I'll, I'll stop you here so that I can listen to someone else yes uh, I was just gonna mention that for work And that could be true for, for some kind of jobs if Wi-Fi is lost, if there is no uh, connection to the internet, then the work is not available. What else? We have one more quick comment. Okay, keep in mind, as I said at the beginning of the class, that if you want to see me, I'll be available in my office until 12.30 today instead of 1 p.m. because after 12.30 I have the opening house of the Globalization Studies program, okay? 